What's up, y'all? Welcome back to part two of the snake drive lesson. So this is going to be the other guitarist part. The um, his name is Mr. Kenny Brown. Uh, he's playing the slide guitar and kind of the other a little bit heavier uh, riff that's going on underneath. We'll go through it real quick, and I'm basically just going to show you the positions that he's holding his hand and the uh, thought process, what he's thinking about um, when he's going through these notes. <laughs> Alright, here we go. So check it out. So there's two drum tracks here that I've made. We're going to start with the second drum loop. This one's kind of got like a more kind of modern groove, I guess. This is kind of how Cedric Burnside plays it these days. Here we go. <laughs> okay, that's the whole riff. Basically it's just E, so it's like Okay, so Kenny Brown does this cool variation where he goes, um, okay, you see what I'm doing there? So basically, it's kind of hammering on uh, this. Okay. He plays it that way. A lot of other guys, when they're covering it, they'll just go, um, <laughs> personally, I kind of like the first version better. So, um, that's the riff. Let's go over the slide bit that he's doing too. So, um, let's start the loop over and I'll just kind of start playing some stuff. Um, let's start it up at the top. Okay. So he starts with the, uh, riff from, bum, 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 bum. And then he goes into the kind of slide bit. Now he plays with a ton of vibrato like this. Okay, let's go over that position. So the first kind of the spot, you know, the riff is kind of an over E, uh, kind of an E blues. So he's thinking, you know, this is part of an E chord. If you think of like E major down here, this is just 12 frets up, 12 and 12, okay? So with slide, you're always looking for adjacent strings that have the same fret, right? Because it's, because the slide is, you know, it goes straight across. Okay, so let's check it out. So basically he kind of goes back and forth and then adds a ton of vibrato. Okay, and then the accent note that he's gonna add on that is this kind of like um, sharp nine interval. It's kind of the, uh, it's from that minor pentatonic. Right, this note. He's just kind of adding those to the kind of riff. So that's kind of the first position, okay? So that's a 12th position. Just think of that, those two frets there. The second part, Let's play this again. Um, the second position is kind of down here. Um, okay, now what are you thinking here? What is he thinking, right? This is like the E chord. So when you, remember when I was saying you look for those adjacent strings that have the same fret here? So that's gonna be, you know, on the ninth fret. Okay, that's the spot that you want to kind of visually go. 
Now, when you play uh, blues stuff in E or like E dominant seven, um, that means that you can also play the D right below it. So it's gonna be like this. These notes are also okay. So he's kind of going back and forth between that kind of like a Okay, that's the end of the loop there, but um, basically, yeah, kind of going back between those. Okay, and then a lot of times we'll resolve with this kind of phrase. Okay, or you could do that, that's the second string, ninth fret on the second string to the third string, ninth fret, or you can come up and do it like this. Okay, and that's a little bit of more of that flat third or sharp nine interval. Okay, so those are kind of the two positions that you're thinking about. This one, and then this one. The ninth and seventh position. And then the other position I forgot to mention here is he also will come up to here. From uh, this ninth fret to the twelfth fret. So he'll also do uh, kind of riffs like that. Like, he'll also do riffs kind of like this. Um, uh, Okay, and it's basically the same, you know, the way that you should think about it, the way he's probably thinking about it is just this position, you know, those two chords that we talked about from the beginning. So it's basically just, you know, E and G. And G is like the relative major of E uh, minor. So it's kind of, it works pretty cool, like over blues stuff, you can kind of play stuff in G as well, um, but, or at least just the G triad. Okay, uh, so cool. Okay, so there's this other thing he does where he kind of is doing these noise solos, um, and basically he's just kind of doing this. Okay, so he's, he's like just kind of going up and like, you know, not really hitting notes that are from a scale or anything. He's just kind of... And he's kind of going up all the way to that next octave, which for me is kind of like right above the uh, first pickup here, the neck pickup. It's kind of equivalent to where the 24th fret would be. Okay, um, so those are kind of the slide bits that he's doing. Um, the other last part I just wanted to show you guys is the uh, other drum loop. This is from the first video too. So this is the drum loop that sounds kind of more uh, how RL plays it if he's just playing with his band. If he plays with North Mississippi All-Stars or like another band or when Cedric Burnside plays this, they, um, they use that groove that we were just doing. And this is the other groove that they'll do. It sounds like this is the other one. So it's, it's like double time, but you still play it this All right, so I had a lot of fun uh, showing you guys this one, and uh, hopefully this makes sense, and um, we'll be back to more acoustic stuff uh, coming up next week, and uh, I'll see you guys there. So, bye.